Welcome to Billing Buddies tutorial video. In this video, we will review how to enter the NPI numbers in versions 16 and 17 of Metasoft. If you need additional help after this video, we can link to you live. You can find our support form at www.billingbuddies.com. Click on the support link on the left and the support form will be in the center of the page. So let's get started. In Metasoft, one of my favorite features under the Help button is the Metasoft Help clickable CMS form. And when we click on that CMS form, we can see that it says at the top, click any field for an explanation of its contents and where in the program the information comes from in that particular box. So, for example, if we want to know box 3, we click on that, and it says in that box the patient's birth date and sex should be, and this information comes from the patient guarantor window, name, address tab, birth date, and sex field. So, today, when we're considering where does the NPI numbers go into Metasoft, what we really need to consider is box 17B, that's the referring doctor, 24J, that's the attending doctor's MPI number, 32A, that's the facility's MPI number, and 33B, that's the pay to or billing MPI number. From an insurance perspective, when they see the word billing provider, they're thinking who is billing us, which provider will we be cutting a check to. That's why with the new claim form, the facility should be filled out for all claims in, and also why Medicare in many states deny claims that the facility isn't filled out. So let's get started with the facility. Box 33A is the most logical because the insurance company points to the tax ID and the NPI number in Box 33A to set up the payment of the claim. Under the file practice information, we look at the first box that comes up and in this tax ID here, this is what's going to be put in box 25 of the claim form. After that is put in there, the insurance company looks from 25 to box 33 and this is the name that should belong to the tax ID number. If this is a person, down here, we for the practice type, we would put an individual. If it's a group, like an S-Corp or a C-Corp or a limited liability company, LLC, we put group. In the new 5010 form, which is one of the major changes for Metasoft, we also have to select the entity type, whether it's a person or a non-person. If it's an individual, obviously it would be a person. If it's a group, it would be a non-person. The next tab we need to address is the practice IDs, which is where the NPI numbers come in. In this field, Metasoft needed to make the form so that it was modifiable based upon providers and insurance companies and facilities. Meaning, if a provider built with a different tax ID, or the provider contracted with a different insurance company with a different tax ID. We need to build all of these exceptions. So when you go into this area the first time, you'll see an all line, which is our default line, plus you will see all of the insurance um, companies that we can build defaults for. If you leave these in there, then we need to edit the MPI number for each insurance company. If we take these out of here, we can default to the all line and build the, the exceptions for the insurance companies as we need them. To take them all out at once, which is what I would recommend, is hold the control delete button. And before you do delete it, if you have the MPI numbers in here and you don't know them, I would write down what your group MPI and taxonomy and tax ID number is. And then I would delete all the rows. Next, I would click New. And we want to make a new default line where 
for all providers, all insurance companies, all facilities, we want to put in the group NPI number if you're a group or the individual NPI number if you're an individual. So I will put in here the group NPI number. The taxonomy code is a code you assign to your NPI number when you set this up, most likely in 2006-2007. If you forget what your tax taxonomy code is, you can just Google that word and you'll be able to find the code for your practice type. For chiropractor, um, I just happen to have this one memorized. I'm going to put that in there. And then your tax ID number, again, you would put that number in here. So again, for all providers, all insurances, all facilities, it's going to put this NPI in box 33A, link this taxonomy code. These, um, some of the, this information, the taxonomy code and the entity type, they go on the 5010 form, but they're not um, held in any place on the, the paper claim form. That's why there's a lot of additional information that's being sent in the 5010 form that more and more insurance companies are moving away from accepting the paper claim form. After we get that, we'll click OK. Now if we had a contract, say with Medica or Medicaid or Medicare, that we had a different tax ID we contracted with them, we could build this in an exception and say for Medicare, we want to bill it with our individual tax number, individual MPI number, and our tax number would most likely stay the same unless your credential is a different provider type. And and then we put our tax number in there. And now when the program looks at this, it's going to take all of the payers and put this information in box 33A, except if it's Medicare, then it's going to put this other information in box 33A. Once you get the hang of that part, the other boxes are really a repeat of how to enter the information. The provider information in box 24J can be found under list of providers and then you'll see your list of providers select the provider you're going to edit at this moment and again the provider ID is where the information is pulling from for all of the um, for this particular provider if you see all of the lines in here for the insurance again you'd want to hit the control delete and get rid of all the rows and add a new row for the all line. And I'm just going to edit this line. When we look at the fields to fill in, it'll say for all insurances, all facilities, file the claim as an individual or group. If you put in the group, it pulls the group and piano. If you just put individual, it doesn't pull the group and piano. So this box is different depending upon how your practice is set up. I'll put the group in here. Um, under the taxonomy code, we can click on the practice or have it click on from here. And the same for the tax ID number. So you would fill in the appropriate fields for each of the providers. And that would complete 24J. Under box 17, B, which is the referring doctor, this field is um, meant to be used for when your services would require the referral, the written referral to be on file. Every specialty is different for chiropractic. It could be, for if you want um, to have an HMO cover it, you need to have the primary care provider have their number in 17A. For the general practice, it might be the lab, the referring doctor for the lab, or surgery, or consult. So if your claim requires a referring doctor in box 17 and 17D, and this referring doctor is a referring doctor that's been referring in your information, you can put in the referring doctor ID, you can edit this, and fill in their provider number in their taxonomy code. And again, we have this field. Is the person referring, the entity referring, I should say, who's 
So that wraps up 